Number one, we need to establish a, a management pattern within a field, and those patterns should ultimately driven be driven by the factors that affect yield. <coughs> That's number one. <coughs> number two, we need to be able to go out and troubleshoot those patterns. I like to think of this like a doctor. When you walk into the doctor's office, what's the first thing they do to you? Get your insurance right off. <laughs> <laughs> get your insurance That's always the first answer I get. Absolutely. <laughs> that, was, that was by the lady at the front desk. When the nurse takes you to the back room, what is she doing? Blood pressure. Blood pressure. Absolutely. Weight. What else? Weight. 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 And height. Absolutely. She sits down with her computer and she starts typing in what? Has your, has your mother ever had diabetes? Has your dad died of a stroke? You know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Before you walked in there, if you've been there before, what does she know about you? Your age, maybe some past medical history, how much weight you've gained since the last time you were in there. So what is she doing? What is she doing? And I heard it. Somebody said it. What is she really doing ultimately? She is gathering data about you so that you can be compared to yourself if there's enough past history or to other people like you, right? So you're a 40-year-old person. You're 50 pounds overweight. Your blood pressure is uh, 20 points too high. The doctor comes in and says what? Hey, chubby. <laughs> Here's some blood pressure medicine until you lose that weight. I'm sorry. Here, here chubby. <laughs> right? Right? And it's the same thing with precision ag. We need to know, we need to use our information about fields so that when we troubleshoot those fields, we make the right recommendation based on our experience and the data we find about it. And ultimately, if I do that well, I want to get to the point where the patterns that I see within the field are truly driven by things outside my control. Okay, so if I eliminate everything that the man has the ability to control, what drives you? Soil type and, and weather, which specifically weather what? Water. Absolutely. Those are the two main drivers from you. Figure or keep that in mind as we talk. And ultimately, ultimately, if I can get to step three, when I go, I want to be able to affect profitability, step four, okay? So here's a field, <coughs> almost 30 acres in Ohio, five years of yield data. Default legends out of SMS, green is high, red is low. Is there any correspondence in the patterns of that field in terms of yield? I would say yes. There's probably more correspondence between those three maps than these two maps. But in general, there's a lot of correspondence between, between those five years of data. <clears throat> this is a guy that has taken the time to assess the things that are within his control and have done a, has done a really, really good job of being able to collect good information to, 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 make, to take the next step. So that when I feel real comfortable about combining those five into this, we'll talk more about normalization in a minute. Why don't I throw these two, two maps into the time series? Why aren't those two maps in that time series? Okay, how many of you guys have reams and reams of yield data printed out in a binder on a shelf? Absolutely. Why? Why is that data on the shelf? No one knows what to do with it, number one, really. No one really has done anything with it. And number two, I question the quality. I've seen way, way too many yield maps collected with improper calibrated equipment, with in-cap, improper calibrated equipment that can lead to yield maps. <laughs> Other than that, maybe it is well calibrated. Stuff. There's something I should be working on. Maybe I haven't addressed the P and K in line that are out there, so there's still issues there. Maybe there's no top. Maybe that's the biggest limiting factor. But ultimately, calibration. I've seen way, 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 way too many yield maps in my career that look like that, where the, the, 
the system wasn't calibrated. Ultimately, if I do a good job of calibration, I should be able to collect the data. Okay? What's next? Are there ways, if you do have bad data, or you have no yield data, are there other data sets out there you can use to establish management patterns within a field? If we talk about the two main drivers to yield again, we talked about soil type and water. How many of you guys have guys driving tractors with RTK steering? What's the accuracy RTK X and Y? Sub inch, right? What's the, what's the other thing that's also accurate there? Z, right? And what's Z? Elevation. Absolutely. Has any of you ever done, taken the data, the elevation data from an RTK steering set, shoved it through the, the, the terrain analysis within SMS Advanced, and looked at the wetness index that's derived? Trade some of that stuff over in the 3D part of it, and you'll see some pretty neat relationships. <laughs> when you go in and you look at, here's my normalized yield map over the elevation. Purple is high and red is low. What's driving yield in that field? You pretty quickly see that there's something different on the tops of the hills from the bottoms of the hills. It's where the water is moving to. And if you think about the five, the five soil forming factors, number one is parent material, and number two is water. When I drove out here on I-80, I could see really orange and, and, and coarse soil types up here. Down in here, what did I see? I saw dark soil. And that's because this area right here is anaerobic for a long time, over the millions of years before we cleared the prairie. And that's where I got a buildup of organic matter. That's a huge soil forming factor. Then you throw man in there, they till this. Where does my topsoil go? All of a sudden, here's my production environments. Okay? And, the, and the, the last thing that you have to get involved in your management plan or building these management patterns in the field is the farmer. You want to have some fun. You're a guy who's gone out, invested the time to collect good data, give him, give him an LCD projector, projector and a dry erase board. And, and put that marker in his hand and said, hey, what's going on? What's going on? Well, that line right there is where old Roy used to farm this side, and I took it over and I knocked the fence row out, and old Roy used to drain this side of the field, and I, I really fed mine, and, and all of a sudden, you learn lots and lots about the pattern you see. Things that are out there that you can never figure out on your own. But let me ask you this. Is there any software package, any computer program, that can replace what's between, between Bruce's ears? No. No way, no how. So the tools are, the challenge is, is to figure out a way to help him drive that pattern. And when you do that, when you do that, I still hear don't look again. <coughs> when you do that, and we build that plan through this kind of method, <coughs> whose plan is it? Is it my plan? No, it's absolutely our plan. And, and I'll tell you, you can learn. There is so much to be learned from, from guys that have seen these fields over the years. Another thing as you're getting to the point where if you're going to use normalized data to derive these management plans, you need to be looking at coefficient of variation. And this is basically a measurement of stability within the field when it comes to the normalized data. And, and essentially, if you look at the research, you'll find that somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3 is where they say is stable and instable. And below 0.2 is pretty stable. And look, so the green over here means it's good, it means it's really stable. If you look at the areas that are instable, you'll find that it has to do with compaction and water and woods. But where I make my bread and butter in this field, through here, is where it's pretty dang stable. 